an algorithm to erase ambiguity? No, it's to augment the variances. And it's a set of computational inputs to augment it. Is this a big problem with other algorithms? People are searching stuff and they can't find what they're looking for? Uh, this is not necessarily. This is, it's hard to put this into perspective. These things are very practical. And you can't explain this thing theoretically unless you're dealing with, let's say, an expert in search engine optimization or search engine marketing or you're dealing with a linguistic expert who could sort of put these things in perspective. Because you're dealing with multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and sort of areas that overlap. There's two distinct areas that you limit here. One is areas that overlap, right? Physics meet music, that's where mutually exclusive disciplines overlap, right? Multidisciplinary areas is where, where you have two mutually exclusive areas that sort of converge. Computation, computation and linguistics, there's a sort of convergence there, sort of hybrid. So, I have an infatuation for niche. I have like tiny little niches, and I find like overlapping and multidisciplinary areas, like a tiny little narrow area that I find intriguing. I like exploring. Do you have an interest, uh, some training in linguistics, and then the search engine stuff? And you're like, ah, this is the it's where it overlaps. This is mm. this is made for me, the segment of the pie. Uh, I could give you the history how I came to this point. Okay. Years ago, I started, I had a deep-seated infatuation with linguistics, primarily studying humor and comedy and literary devices and a number of different um, concepts that humor or the punchline or what laughter derives from is predicated on. So I started publishing three books simultaneously. The whole objective was to publish these books in, in papers, publish them in, I killed two birds with one stone, publish a bunch of papers and then extract, consolidate them into books. So I started pu publishing three books simultaneously. One is called aggregating the figurative aspect of linguistic disparity, where I'm going to take um, literary devices and create a taxonomy of all the commonalities different devices share in common. So that's aggregating the figurative aspect of ling linguistic disparity. The second book was called The Cross-Platforming Between Mutually, Mutually Exclusive Domains, where I'll study different disciplines and find commonalities they share from an analogical and metaphorical perspective. This all comes back to linguistics. So you have aggregating the figurative aspect of linguistic disparity, the cross-platforming of mutually exclusive domains, and the third book I, I, I started was called um, The Pervasiveness of Ambiguity in Semantics, where I explore every facet of ambiguity in semantics, primarily homonym, homophones, homograph, heteronym, heterograph, polysemy, monosemy, capitonym, paronym, hyphenym, merinym, and holonym. Those are 14 I call so far. So while publishing these books, I feel sort of isolated because it's just centered around a tiny fraction of academic appeal, right? So, so I was sort of lackadaisical in the publication. And I felt at the time that I didn't have the, the intellectual capacity required to put these things in perspective. So again, it's three books simultaneously, so the process takes years. So years went by. And I'm writing for these news sites, the Harlem Times, Ask a New Yorker, and, um, and um, Ask a New Yorker, and News Blazing, Australian-based news site. And I started freelancing for an uh, 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 editor, a news publisher of his own newspaper in Australia. And we started discussing a number of different problems that um, um, search, engine, um, search engine optimization experts deal with right on a daily basis. And when I started to do, do my research in search engine optimization, I saw a big guy. And then I saw, wow, and so instead of writing all these academic papers on linguistics and in relations to humor and physics, I said, well, here's an area that I could actually put some things into perspective with practical, that has practical application. So this is where I sort of converge all these ideas now and decided to take this sort of knowledge and implement it in, in, in in, in language, in algorithms. Because the problem the, the, that a lot of these ag algorithms have is with language, the inefficiency of language and the idiosyncrasies of language. Well, speaking of language, that explanation was very dense. 